As we do genealogy, we run into a number of pitfalls or genealogy mistakes. If you are a beginning genealogist or a further down the family history road, might I recommend that you don't make some of these common genealogy mistakes. So how can we avoid some of the common genealogy mistakes that newbies, intermediates, and um, sometimes experienced genealogists make? Well, let's talk about seven of those now. And in the comments, make sure you tell me, have you made any of these mistakes and how you learned to avoid them? So the first one is jumping to conclusions. So jumping con to conclusions involves when you do research and you type in a name, let's say Chester Ward, born in 1818 in New York, and you type that into a search engine or you find them in original records and you think, oh, Chester Ward, born 1818, New York. This has to be my ancestor. Right. There are a lot of Chester Wards born in 1818 in New York. You need to know a little bit more about that Chester Ward to make sure that you get the right ancestor. Otherwise, you're going to fall into the trap that a number of people find themselves in of merging two people with the same name. So always try to do, dive deeper. Try to figure out who was Chester's parents, who were his spouses, one or more. What were the, his children's names? What was his occupation? Um, where did he travel? Where did he live? All of these identifying features can help you to know when you find a record, if it's about your Chester or not. The next mistake, failing to read the whole record. And this can happen to the best of us. For decades, my family didn't know how to get the name of the father of Leon Philip Smith. Yeah. Smith. <laughs> Smith is such a common name. So how would we ever figure out who Philip Smith's parents were? Well, if we fail to read the whole record, we're going to make the next mistake. You see, this is a marriage certificate and it looks innocently like it is the entire record. And for 30 years, researchers didn't realize that there were some overlays. There were some side notes on the facing page for the marriage record. So a tip to avoid making these failure to read the whole record mistakes is to always look at the page before, the page after, maybe the facing page, the backside page, because what we found was right there on that record for generations was the name of Leon Phillips' father, David Smith. And all we needed to do was look at the entire record. The next mistake is failing to research siblings. Far too often, genealogists will research just straight up their family tree. But if you did this, you're going to miss out on details that help you cross the proverbial ponds. Find the crack in the brick wall that you need. And in this case, I was researching the Pusaker family. And if all I did was look for Caroline Pusaker and I find her siblings in the census records and find her parents' name and call it quits, I never would have found this one important detail had I not stopped to research her brother, Ludwig. Well, on his gravestone, it's hard to read, which is why I brought it out. It said that he was born in Gilersheim, Hanover. <gasps> oh my goodness. So when I went back to this family tree, I was able to find out where everybody was born more than just Germany here over in the American records. I was able to figure out, hey, Carl Friedrich and her mother were married in Gillersheim. I didn't really know that before. 
um, I was able to not only put this family back in Gillersheim, I noticed that there were some of their neighbors in Franklin County, Ohio, who are also from Gillersheim. They traveled on the same ship. They appear in those Gillersheim records. And now I realize they are actually not only kinsmen, I mean, townsmen, they're kinsmen. They're related. I can't tell you how important it is to go and research the siblings because when you do, chances are you're going to pick up these other brick wall busting details that you're overlooking. Now let's talk about handling maiden names. And we actually have two videos that you're going to want to check out. The link in the description for for a comedic look on how to deal with surnames. And you're also going to see another one where Caleb tells you, please stop doing this in the family trees. What are these this? Well, the first one is using the maiden name M-N-U. M-N-U is not a maiden name. And in the past, when we were doing paper records and we were sharing records with people, we tended to put M-N-U for maiden name unknown. But that's not this person's maiden name. And the reason why you don't need to do this in online genealogy and digital genealogy anymore, just leave the field blank because then you don't complicate the search engines with this last name that doesn't apply to your ancestor. Leave it blank. Leave it blank. Now, the other thing people tend to do is use the last name Unk, U-N-K. It's almost as bad as maiden name unknown, M-N-U. Leave it blank. If it's blank, other researchers know that it's blank and you haven't figured that information out. It's okay to have a blank in your tree. Please, please. Don't do that because one of the other mistakes people do with maiden names is use married names in the place of maiden names. And I want to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. So here we have Leon Phillips Smith again, and his wife's name is Mary Elizabeth Smith. Well, it just so happens the Smith married a Smith. How's that for complicating things? And Mary Smith is the daughter of Daniel Smith, and Leon Smith is the son of David Smith. Yeah, it gets extremely complicated. But it happens. People with the same last name marry each other. But if you put the married name, let's say her last name was Mary Elizabeth Browning, but you put her last name Smith in the surname field, then people will be looking for Mary Elizabeth Smith and confuse her with the one who is the daughter of Daniel. Instead of looking for Mary Elizabeth Smith, the daughter of Robert Browning. So when you have a maiden name, leave the field blank if you don't know what her name is. And if she married, don't put her maiden name in that field. Now, this may change if you are working with foreign cultures, uh, cultures that are not U.S. or British-centric, where you do have the father and the mother's name, such as Hernandez y Espinosa. You can put both of those names in there because that is her father's name and that is her mother's name and you put Hernandez y Espinosa in there. That is fine. But when she's married, you don't tack on her married name of Ortega. You just leave Hernandez y Espinosa. If you have any questions or comments, make sure that you put them in the description below. And it's okay to disagree with me. This is a place where we can have these discussions. But please do your best to let people know what the real last name of your ancestors are. And if you don't know what it is, leave it blank. Now, it is okay to have multiple trees when you're doing a theory. Maybe you have your main tree and you have a theory tree. 
that's okay. Maybe like I do, I have a tree for the people I most want to research or I have my Uncle Bob's tree. He, he, I like to play with Uncle Bob because he has a challenging tree, tree. It passes through New York and New York has a lot of privacy restrictions on their records. So I like to have his tree sep- separate. I also have some other project trees, some godparents that aren't exactly relatives. So you might have these little project trees and that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uploading new versions of your family tree to my heritage, to ancestry, to find my past, and not deleting the old versions of your tree. What that does is it especially if you make all of these versions public, is that you make clutter on the platform. You damage and frustrate the user experience for others on the tree. What is What am I talking about? Well, I will use genealogy programs, such as Ancestry, MyHeritage, and they will give me hints about other users' trees. Well, then it will turn out the same person has 50, copies of Robert Claybaugh. 15. And I have no idea how to determine if they're doing quality research or not because I don't know which version is the most updated. It's clutter. It causes frustration. It wastes resources for that company. And I don't want to talk to you. (laughs) Can you imagine the collaborative nature of genealogy that we are not going to be able to continue if we continually have multiple copies of the same person over and over and over in all these trees. So it is okay to have multiple copies of trees, but please delete your old versions and only work with the freshest one on your computer and online. Now this is a common mistake in beginning genealogy, and that is not researching all of your lines. Typically, when I run into this, people are either researching their father's 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 line, or their mother's 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 line, or sometimes, sometimes, their mother's father's 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 line. But do you see this fan chart? The person in the center is you. Pretend it's you. You may not be Burton Eugene Lee, but the person in the center has all of these family lines that you can choose from. And some of you have challenging trees. Maybe you're in America and have been here for several generations and your ancestors are from Poland and you don't read the Polish. And Polish is a very challenging place to research because of all the boundary changes and the political upheaval and where are the records. So if you're trying to find your Polish ancestors that up your dad's 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 sign, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to quit because you don't take the time to look at the other people on the family tree that can help you build your skills as a genealogist so that when you know how to read Polish and you can access Polish records, you can have more success. So please don't make this mistake and only focus on one line. When you hit a brick wall, Instead of not doing anything for the next 20 years, go work on another branch. Spelling. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times, and I love you people so much. This is why I'm going to tell you, don't make this mistake. And the mistake is to assume that spelling was consistent the further back you go in your family tree. It is okay if sometimes Eliza is spelled E. L-I-S-A, and sometimes it's spelled E-L-I-Z-A. That's okay. Keep both versions. Which one do you put in the name field is going to be a matter of debate, and we have it a lot of times here on the channel, and yes, we can talk about that in the comment section. You might be picking up on the theme, <laughs> the thought that we, we can t- talk in the comment section. Absolutely. So don't get hung up that your name is always spelled this way. I made this mistake early on because my ancestors, my um, great aunts and great uncles, they told me if you do not spell Geisler, G-E-I-S-Z-L-E-R, 
we're not related. And if you do spell it with a Z, we are. Well, guess what? That's not right. Because it just so happens in German, because this is the German name, SC is really a beta. And when that name came over to America, there's no beta. The funky looking bee. It's a really cool bee. So what did they do? Well, they came up with their spellings. Sometimes it's SS, sometimes it's SZ, sometimes it's just an S, and sometimes it's completely different. Sometimes it's actually spelled with a K instead of a G at the beginning. And S, 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 Z, S, you get the idea. So don't get hung up on the spelling of the names. Learn to have a big list of all the phonetic variations of how your name could be spelled. And then also make sure if it goes from a language that doesn't have le similar letters in the new place your ancestors migrated to, that you go and find the various spellings in that original language as well. Now, that is only seven of the mistakes that I know I have made, which is why I shared them with you. I don't want you to make the mistake, same mistakes I did for probably a few too many years than I should have. Be sure that you subscribe to this channel so you can see more videos to help you with climbing your family tree and making those connections that are so powerful. To get you started on what to watch next, I've already pre-selected the next videos for you to watch and it's this one right here.